So I found this great uh, regulator of uh, Amazon. You can also get it on eBay. Uh, it's very inexpensive and uh, it's got uh, really lots of uh, goodies on it. And uh, we're gonna check to see why is it so great. I'm also gonna compare it to another inexpensive uh, buck converter as well. Uh, but I'm pretty impressed with this thing. Uh, let's dive into it. Let's have a look to see why this is a great inexpensive regulator. So let's look at this regulator a little close up here. So what do we see? Uh, what we like about it is A, if you notice here, it's got its own uh, rectifier. So you could actually put AC, not just DC. So it actually rectified as a big capacitor to filter the rectifier part. And uh, it's got the LM317. Uh, and also there is the, uh, there's an L7809 uh, also, part of the regulator as well. And there's a transistor. So this is not just a small, simple circuit. All right, so here it is. We put it in our uh, cookie jar here. Uh, I was going to clean my desk, but I figured, oh, you know what, let's uh, show people what's it like on a, on a bad day with a big mayhem going on. So let's apply power and see what happens there. There it goes. So, yeah, look at that. That is very, very impressive. Uh, just some low level noise um, pretty much I would say the highest peak here is like 2 microvolt and let's see if there's anything creeping up past the no it actually tapers down in the 50 kilohertz range so this is a heavier load I put a, a light bulb you can see it here and uh, so this is drawing around uh, I believe 300 uh, milliamps here, you can see it, and uh, it's still really low into the, uh, uh, so about the same, about 3 microvolts, so I haven't changed much really, so it's behaving well under a heavier load. Things you want to keep in mind is that you kind of need, so let's say you want 6 volts, you need to give it at least 4 volts more than what you want to get to differential between input and output. Uh, it will regulate if you give it less, and I'll demonstrate that. For example, now I'm trying to get 6 volts, so I'm going to give it about 9 and it's still almost like you can start to see it struggling now it's not six volts and right off the bat we got noise picking up it's just struggling to regulate and uh, so if we give it a little bit more voltage we're about nine and a half and yeah three and a half volts seems to do it so i would say 10 just to be on the safe side so if you give it a differential of four volts you're not going to have noise so Keep that in mind, it's slightly and it kind of takes a little bit more juice than, than you think it will. Uh, the heat sink that's on it, it's probably, right now we're drawing about, I don't know if you can see this, this is 0 0.4 amps. Uh, and uh, so it's drawing about 0 0.4 amps. So if you need more, you'll have to put a bigger heat sink than the one uh, that is supplied. Next, we're going to try a buck converter. Uh, buck converters, they use more switching frequency to, to uh, regulate. And uh, they could create more noise by doing so. But let's see if that's really true and which one is actually better. Again, we uh, put it under test in our cookie jar here. Okay, so here we go with the buck converter. We are feeding it uh, 9 volts. It's uh, outputting 6 volts, so this guy is here under test in the cookie jar. And uh, so what we got? We have about, it's actually not bad, I'm actually pretty impressed, I'm expecting horrors here. Uh, we're looking about close to 8, 9 microvolts. So not bad, actually pretty respectable, that's really good. And let's just make sure, we can only go to 50k here. Oh, here we go, and we see a little spike right here uh, in the 50k zone. What we got? 
It's 350 microvolt, uh, getting close to a half a millivolt here. So that's not good. Uh, and that's the thing about switching uh, uh, regulators. Uh, you will get noise. I'm pretty sure if we had more bandwidths here, okay, this is not state-of-the-art equipment, we might even see more. But at least in the audible, for the audio, uh, for audio zone, it, it's actually still not bad. So I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't count it off, but it did have some uh, some spike actually let's leave that screen on this side seems to be this kind of give us still the 60 and the 50 it's not a bad uh, view now let's try giving it uh, more load and uh, see what happens so we're giving it here more load and uh, what do we see we got some more horrors happening uh, we're still regulating at 6 volts we got 9 volts now we have a big spike here of uh, one that's a big spike this is 41 millivolts that's not good that's again in that 40 uh, k zone and uh, and that's uh, there's more here there's another spike here also not negligible about 120 uh, microvolts at least and that's in the uh, 15k zone that's audible uh, i mean and the other one could possibly affect the audible range so uh, you could start to see that the buck converter here is starting to lose its grip on usability for uh, high sensitive audio devices and, and now you could see the advantages of something like the uh, the lm based regulator now let's try giving it uh, more volts we're going to go to 12 volt remember how we tortured the other guy a little bit we need to do the same thing when i give this guy 15 volts here that's pretty much 12 12 good enough okay so that's uh, again uh we have got a huge spike here at 170 millivolts in the 40k range it's uh it's up it's your call at least you get to see how how they both behave in in, in real world and uh, what you would like to choose uh, the good thing about this is they don't overheat very easily they can handle a lot a lot of power uh, versus uh, these guys can overheat but depend if your application doesn't need a huge amount of power i mean this was doing good up to half an amp so that's that's pretty that's pretty good. You could put a bigger, uh, bigger heatsink on it. So okay. So uh, in my application, I wanted 3.3 volts. So I adjusted the potentiometer, and when I got the right voltage, I measured the resistors, and one was 4.2 k, and one is 160 ohms. So this way, in case you want a fixed value, so you don't have accidentally turned the potentiometer by mistake, you can do that. Uh, it might be slightly different for your case, but that was a value in mind. Uh, by the way, the cost of this is only $5, if you could believe it. Uh, this also has an L7809, which is right here. So it's not just the LM317. So there's a lot of versions of this that does not have this L7809. And I'm not sure how valuable it is to stabilize the circuit. But just so you know, uh, that this is the actual version you might want to buy if you want the exact same uh, measurement uh, results. I hope you like this video about this uh, really cool regulator and uh, if you like this channel please subscribe. If you want to see how my testing equipment works and how you can do the same I'll put a link uh, on the corner here and just to show you how I did my setup using just very inexpensive computer and a small little uh, uh, sound card. Uh, till then we'll see you in another video. Take care.